Gumbo is one of the symbolic dishes of American culinary history, a melting pot of three cultures, European, Native American, and West African, and all together created what we know today as Southern cuisine. Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. At its most basic, the gumbo that we know today is a savory stew with a mixture of meat, seafood, combination of both, some vegetables, seasoning, and then from there, all bets are off. There are more gumbo recipes across the country than there are chefs in New Orleans. So today I'm going to be making you my gumbo. Uh, basic gumbo uh, has three components. You start off with one, the vegetables, and then the next is your meat or seafood or combination of both. And then finally, the seasonings. You have to get all of those ready first before you go on to the last stage, the important stage, the roux. The vegetables that we use in a gumbo are bell peppers, onion, celery, well, an okra too, but I'll talk about that in just a minute. We're going to take these three vegetables and just cut them really into just bite-sized pieces. It's really important we get all of the vegetables done ahead of time because you can't chop them once the roux is ready on the stove. In modern times, the mixture of the celery, the bell peppers and the onion became known as the Holy Trinity, the Holy Trinity of Southern cooking. Stage two is the seasoning. Now, don't be scared or put off by all of these ingredients. Each one brings something to the table in our gumbo. It really does, I promise. You can actually buy a ready-made Cajun seasoning, Creole seasoning, uh, there are some good makes out there, but for me, it's, it's all about creating your own. And so I have some pepper, black pepper, some salt, onion powder, garlic powder, thyme, oregano, smoked paprika, a little basil, and I like to use, rather than cayenne pepper, I like to put in some chili flakes. Mix all of those together. Now you may not need it all, it's down to personal seasoning. And I do cut short on the salt, so you can add more salt later if you want to. But once this is all mixed in, try and keep it in the bowl. You can then keep this and it'll keep for, you know, a few months. You can keep going back to it. This over some fish or some chicken, you know, is amazing. It's a great mixture. Stage three is the meats or the fish or the combination of both. And in my gumbo, I like to add the combination of both. I love to put crawfish in there. It's so, I don't know, so Louisiana, isn't it? I mean, it's, it really is New Orleans. And I use those instead of the shrimp. You can add the shrimp as well, but that's a little bit overkill. Then of course, I've got some sausage, some andouille sausage. That's gotta go in there. But then if you don't wanna put that in, some smoked sausage, 
Polish sausage if you want to in there. We really want sort of that smoky, sausagey flavor in the texture too. And that's where our meat comes in. Next, the chicken. I use chicken thighs because we want that texture flavor. I think that, you know, just using chicken breasts is, they just all fall apart and it's just yeah, nasty. So crawfish, I've got those. You can buy them frozen. They come in like a little butter, save the butter too, because that needs to go in the sauce. But these are going in last minute because they're cooked already. So I can take my andouille sausage and start cutting it into little discs. Now on the thighs, I've got some fat on here. Don't cut that off, leave it on. It's going into the gumbo and it's going to render down and just all of that flavor is gonna be absolutely gorgeous. So once again, cut this into little bite-sized pieces. If you're doing a shrimp gumbo, then you don't need the chicken, obviously. But if you're doing the chicken, it's actually best to sear the chicken first so I start in my gumbo pan with some oil, some vegetable oil because it has a high flash point and then carefully add the chicken. We give this a nice stir, but let it sit there as well. Let it get some color on it. That's called the Maillard reaction, the um, caramelization of the proteins. And it tastes much better, even when it's in the gumbo. We're not actually cooking it all the way through. We're actually going to sear it, leave it on the side. Once it's, once it's seared, we're going to strain it into a colander. Let all the juices fall through. But save those because they're going into the gumbo later. Once the chicken comes out, what I'm left with in the bottom is something called the deglaçage. That's all those beautiful caramelized pieces on the bottom, and we don't want to lose those. We get it really, really hot, and then I'm going to add just a little chicken broth in there. They get in the pan really hot, and adding the chicken broth just drags all those pieces of meat, of protein off the bottom. And that I'm going to pour over my chicken and that will go back in the sauce a little bit later. Now the most important part, the roux. We start off with some vegetable oil and we use equal parts of vegetable oil to flour. We heat the oil to begin with to get it really, really hot and then add the flour into it. After that, you've got to whisk away at that you can turn it down low if you want, but you're just whisking away at it for about 15 to 20 minutes. The roux is classic French cuisine. It dates back to the 1400s and chefs back then were making really strong roux. In fact, the roux is the foundation of the mother sauce espagnol in classic French cuisine. When I was at the Savoy Hotel in London, we used to make espagnole all the time. We'd start off with this gorgeous mahogany roux. Mahogany roux, I say that because there are different stages of the roux. Look at this picture. We have the blonde roux and so on, and then work through to that mahogany one. The mahogany one is the very last one before burnt roux. And we don't want burnt roux because that's bitter. But because we want mahogany roux, it's so close to that burnt roux, we have to stay with it all the time. It's constantly cooking and it gets really, really hot too. Up to 400 degrees or more in that pan. Get the oil hot and then add in the flour. And now we're going to start whisking. Turn it down. Don't worry if it scorches around the side. I don't mind a little color in there from the top. Turn it down really low. I'm bringing in some of that color from the outside gradually but it is going to scorch on the bottom and that's what I need to keep moving. This takes about 20 minutes and the most important part here as well, not only the whisking, but to have your vegetables, your Holy Trinity ready. Because as soon as we get to the mahogany roux, that is when we put the vegetables in. <clears throat> Still here. 
my arm's falling off. <laughs> Look at the colour of this now. Just whisking away for about 15 minutes or so. Look at the colour of it. The stages that roux goes through. It smells absolutely amazing. And you have to go to this level to get that flavour in the sauce. It's not far off now. We want to go to sort of chocolatey, mahogany. And the temperature in there, as I said, is over 400 degrees. So don't be tempted to dip your finger in there. Now that's a dark roux. We've got to act quick. The vegetables have got to go in. Stir those vegetables in and let them simmer away. Now adding the vegetables has dropped the temperature of the roux, so it's not going to brown anymore. But we do still need to keep moving it every now and then. Once the vegetables start to soften, then I can add some chicken broth. You can use shrimp broth in there if you're not doing a seafood one, um, or some sort of crab broth in there too. Next, we're going to add the sausage. And finally, the chicken. I say finally, but we've actually got something else to put in there as well. The juices from the chicken and a little more chicken broth. Gumbo is a cross between a soup and a, and a stew, so we don't want it too thick uh, and we don't want it too thin either. Once it comes to the boil, then I'm going to add some of my seasoning mix in there. Don't add too much, you can always add a little bit more later and it's going to be simmering for about an hour so it'll start reducing down. Best to add a little bit more later. And then I'm going to put in my okra. Okra comes from the word gombo. Gombo means okra in West African. I think that's where the, d the dish just originates from. You know, we put the roux in there as our thickening agent, but most gumbos actually use two thickenings and in this one I'm using my uh, roux uh, and then also um, as it cooks uh, the okra is going to start to thicken it a little bit too. Once it comes to the boil reduce it down. Some people they'll put um, filet in there uh, which is sort of the ground leaves from the sassafras tree. You'd use filet and the roux in there but you wouldn't use all three. Using filet and uh, okra and the roux in there that would be like mixing cabernet sauvignon and sauvignon blanc all together that something you just don't do so choose the two add those to it and let that simmer away it's been cooking now for about an hour and it smells absolutely gorgeous i'm going to add the crawfish into this now if you're using shrimp, that's when the shrimp go into. If you put them in too early, they just cook to a mush and that's not good. Look at that. It looks amazing. The okra has started to soften in there. You really do need two thickening agents. You need the roux and you need the filet or you need the okra. You know, you can use either on there. And back in the olden days, uh, people would use the okra in the summer when it was plentiful and available. And then in the winter, they turn to the filet and use that instead. So filet gumbo was more a winter dish. A little rice on top, just to finish it off. The smell of it, the crawfish and the, oh, the chicken, the sausage in there and that dark roux really does smell amazing. It tastes incredible. So easy to make. A little time with the roux, but easy to make. So, is gumbo British? Of course not. <laughs> but, imagine taking this gumbo and ladling lashings of it into a giant Yorkshire pudding. Hmm, now that would be British fusion. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go and make a gumbo. Leave me your recipe below because there's hundreds out there. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up. Share with your friends too. We're getting close to 200,000 subs and that big Q&A. See you again soon.